I'm Amashni. In this lesson, we'll be working with fractions that have unknowns in the denominator. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve equations with fractions that include simple unknowns and find restrictions in denominators. In our previous lesson, the denominators of the fractions consisted of numbers. In this lesson, we will work with fractions that have unknowns in the denominator. Take a look at this example. Solve for x if 3 divided by 2x minus a quarter is equal to 6 divided by x. Now how should we solve this equation? What can you think of doing? If you thought of finding a common denominator to multiply each of these terms by, then you are quite correct. Now let's have a look at these denominators again. We have 2x, 4 and x. We can find a common multiple by multiplying out the denominators. 2x multiplied by 4 multiplied by x gives me 8x squared. This number is a common multiple. But remember, we need to find the lowest, smallest common multiple. Do you know why we have to find the lowest common multiple? The reason is very simple. We try to keep our calculation as easy and simple as possible. To find the lowest common multiple of these numbers, we must factorize them. So, 2x is equal to 2 times x. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. And if we go back to our question, we see that x is already in its simplest form. So we can write x is equal to x. Now what is the lowest common multiple of these numbers? Remember two facts about the lowest common multiple. One, it is the smallest number into which all these numbers will divide. And two, it includes all the factors of all the numbers. So now let's create that number. LCM. For 2x to divide into the multiple, it must contain a 2 and an x. So let's write 2 multiplied by x. For 4 to divide into the multiple, it must contain 2 and a 2. Now if you look, there's already one 2 here, which means I need to multiply by another 2. For x to be part of the multiple, the multiple must contain an x. But if you look, the x is already here, so we don't need to write another one. This means that our LCM can now be written as 2 times x times 2, which is in fact 4x. Right, what is the next step? How do we use the LCM to solve the equation? To simplify this equation, we must multiply every term by the LCM. Remember, we are working with fractions, so we need to write the LCM as a fraction. So we get 3 divided by 2x multiplied by 4x over 1, which is the LCM, minus a quarter multiplied by 4x over 1 is equal to 6 divided by x multiplied by 4x over 1. Now, we need to cancel out terms. 2 goes into 2 once. 4 divides by 2 twice. The x's divide into each other once. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 4 once. Here, the x's divide into each other and we end up with 1. Right, let's see what we are left with. 3 multiplied by 2 minus x is equal to 6 times 4. Let's multiply out our numbers. 3 times 2 is 6 minus x is equal to 6 times 4, which is 24. Now we want to solve for x. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. I get 6 minus 6 minus x is equal to 24 minus 6. We left with minus x is equal to 
18. But remember, we are solving for positive x, which means that I need to divide both sides by negative 1. I get x is equal to negative 18. Let's check our answer. Now, if we substitute negative 18 into our original equation, our answer will be correct if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Let's check our answer. The left-hand side is equal to 3 divided by 2x minus a quarter. Let's substitute negative 18 for x. We get 3 divided by 2 times negative 18 gives me negative 36 minus a quarter. Now, do you see that we can simplify this fraction further? 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 36 12 times. So we are left with 1 divided by negative 12 minus a quarter. Now we are subtracting fractions. Do you remember what we must do when we are adding and subtracting fractions? Yes we need to find the lowest common denominator. Now if you look at 12 and 4, we've got to think, what is the lowest common denominator that 12 and 4 can both go into? We know that the answer is 12, so we can write negative 1 12th minus. Now, we need to convert the 4 to a 12, which means I must multiply by 3. But remember, Whatever we do to the denominator, we must also do to the numerator, which means I must also multiply by 3. So in fact, I am multiplying by 3 divided by 3. I get 3 divided by 4 times 3 is 12. Now, we have the same denominators, which means that we can subtract the fractions. I get minus 4 over 12. Now, if we look carefully, we can see that this fraction can still be simplified further. 4 divides into 4 once, 4 divides into 12 three times. So I am left with negative one third. Now let's simplify the right hand side. We know that x is negative 18, so let's substitute. We got 6 divided by negative 18. This is one fraction, so all we have to do is simplify this fraction. 6 divides into 6 once, 6 goes into 18 three times. I am left with negative one-third. Now because the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, we know that our answer x equals to negative 18 satisfies this equation. In other words, our calculations were correct. Now it is always a good idea to check your answer just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. Now there's just one more concept that we have to deal with when working with fractions with unknowns in the denominator. Let's have a look at the original question. Consider the fraction 6 divided by x. For what values of x is this fraction defined? Think about it. Can x be any value? Do you remember that when we are working with fractions, there is a restriction on the denominator. The denominator cannot be equal to 0. So, 6 divided by 0 would make this fraction undefined. So the restriction here is x is not equal to 0. Now in this fraction, the same is true. If x were equal to 0, 2 times 0 would be 0. 3 divided by 0 would make this fraction undefined. So the restriction is still true. x is not equal to 0. When you solve an equation, always remember that if the fraction contains an unknown in the denominator, always check that your denominator is defined. Let's summarize what we learned in today's lesson. No fraction may have a zero denominator. And the lowest common denominator must include all factors of all the denominators. Now test your knowledge with this task. 3 divided by 2y plus 1 sixth is equal to 
4 divided by 3 y. Number 1. Are there any values that y may not be equal to? Explain your answer. Number 2. Solve for y. Be sure to join me in our next lesson. Oh, 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 oh,